summon someone from YouTube to come over and film. This is great. This is great content. Do I, do I just start walking around? Do I just give interviews in the lineup? <laughs>
guys find out about the Goblin Zone? Uh, one of my friends told me, and I've been following the Instagram ever since. Great place. Uh, I was looking for like stuff in the Lansing music scene since I was going to be moving there soon, and I found it through Instagram. What does the Goblin Zone mean to you? Like, the, yeah. Oh man, the everything. Like this is like a place where like the Lansing community can like kind of come together and like, not care about real life problems. Like once a month, twice a month, however often they come, and there's always a fantastic concert going or some good vendors. Uh, just like a a very community based place, and uh, yeah. come open minded. Watch the bands playing, and I'm sure you'll have a good time. Talk to people. It's a great community. It's probably the best Lansing venue. I can. It's probably it's the only Lansing. <laughs> I'm glad to call Kiefer one of my very close friends. And when they asked us to play in their garage, I'm like, fuck yeah! You know, no barricade, no stupid security. Just Kiefer and vibes, man. It's so sick. It's grown a lot since the first one, and I'm very glad to call that place like a second home to me. Uh, and Kiefer, my my phone is open if you want the clipboards back. We're, we're down. Kiefer really makes it an effort to get around to everybody and um, really make them feel heard and they have a way of talking to people that is just so comforting. So I think that's really what makes it different is just Kiefer. How many Goblin Zones have you been to? Probably like six. Six what's, or seven. What's your favorite part about the Goblin Zone? The people. That's what I was going to say too. Everybody that we've met here, for I sure. I love coming here, having conversations with people I haven't seen since a lot so it's always really fun. What's your favorite thing about the Goblin Zone, Sean? The people, you know, like just the environment. Just like everyone coming together and having a good time. I feel like everybody who goes there just like knows that they're accepted and stuff and like just like I don't know I never feel like uncomfortable I get anxious a lot whenever I like sing or like do anything and like I know everybody there is like really calm and it's just there to enjoy everything so like just makes me feel comfortable I feel like being an art vendor at the Goblin Zone. Super fun, literally so fun. Keeper helped out with like everything. It was honestly my favorite vending experience, yeah. I do a lot of painting, but I also make jewelry and drawing too, but I like working with acrylic, acrylic painting and jewelry. The more you talk to people and like get to know people that are like doing the same thing that you want to do and like interested in the same things that you're interested in, you'll just make more connections and learn new things all the time and like get new opportunities and that's just kind of how it happened for me. So my name's Emily. Uh, my favorite band is Sublime, I think. Sublime, nice. Yeah. What is your music hot take? My music hot takes, uh, Scott Music rocks. I go to a show. Um, everyone here is super fucking kind and is accepting it. And, uh, Making a movie, Dane. So true. Dane, what's your what's your favorite thing about the Goblin Zone? Um, the bathroom. Uh, why why is the bathroom your favorite part? Uh, um, I like to go to the bathroom. I actually I think my favorite part about the Goblin Zone is the line to the bathroom because before it's a line, it's a community. 
of other people that need to go to the bathroom. And when you're in line with other people and you're all sharing the same experience of having to go to the bathroom, it's a beautiful thing. What's your name? How old are you? What's your hometown? Owen Fedorko, 24, from Petoskey, Michigan. It's kind of hard to like sum it all up into just like a few words, but like it's just it's super inclusive, especially for like LGBTQ plus members. Like we will go out of our way to make sure that it is a safe space for everyone here, no matter who you are. Like this this spot means so much to us, and we're gonna keep it that way and fight for it. Bands that like I really do love and appreciate for what they do are bands like uh, Corduroy Pants and Tournament and uh, and Dad Caps. <laughs> And, and final boss fight. Shout out Sage, just moved across the street from me. Sage, we're live at the gathering of the Juggalos 2023 in Detroit, Michigan. What are your, what's your words of wisdom? Um, whoop, whoop. <laughs> say your name, say your age, and say your location. So, social security number. The last four digits. Yeah, uh, Sage, 26. Eight for the social security number. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your band Final Boss Fight. Tell me a little bit about you guys. We're a band. We make music. Um, it's really simple music. Mm -hmm. There's nothing hard about it, but it's fun to dance to. And what are your biggest musical influences? Um, Choice Manor, Tournament, Go Mockingbird, Stone Cold Steve Austin, um, and Miley Cyrus. And what is your favorite show you've ever played? Excellent seat. Alright, it's the last chance you have to go fucking ape shit. Jump off the stage, Ash. Whatever the fuck you want to do. And I'll turn this thing out. super cool DIY band from Lansing, Michigan, and they fucking rip, and I'm so excited to see them tonight. Favorite song in general? I don't know. Uh, Roku by Final Boss Fight's pretty good. What band are you most excited for tonight? M-Way or Final Boss Fight? I'm in a band called Final Boss Fight, and we just want to have fun. And we have a lot of fun here at Keefer's house. I love playing here. I've played here a million and five times. And I'll play here a million and five times more. You know, places like here, places like the Church of Elvis Presley, wherever you might go, there's a lot of community here, and it's beautiful to see everyone come together and share a common interest. And that's what I love about these shows, is that we get to share a common interest in bonding over music and the emotion that music brings out of you. It's wonderful. And if you ever want to go out and, and hear some rock and roll and make some new friends, Come out to Kiefer's Place, the Goblin Zone, or go out to wherever, wherever you, there's fun music happening wherever you are, you know, even if you're in Idaho, you know? There's probably music happening in Idaho. Check it out, maybe. Check, out, check with your friend Mac from Idaho. Uh, all right, this is John. John, what is your music hot take? Oh, um, Christian Rock is absolutely garbage. I got into music uh, when I was very young. I got into Green Day. And uh, I just, 
their songs are very easy to learn because of power chords for the most part. So I recommend if you like Green Day and you want to get into music, perfect timing. Uh, yeah, definitely. And also check out local bands. If you want to get into starting your own band, just go to local shows, meet people, become friends with people, start jamming. You know, just be open. Uh, so, so outgoing. Be outgoing. Okay, I love you guys. Bye bye. We were in a bunch of bands prior to tournament, Corduroy Pants, Dad Caps, Final Boss Fight, and we got together and we decided to write some weird shit. And you probably know some friends who want to write some weird shit too. So why don't you get together with them and make some make some alt country and and some and some some emo music that makes people cry a little bit. That's how we started, and you know, that's that's all music is, is people getting together and, and singing weird sad shit. Biggest influence for tournament is a guy named Jason Molina in the early 2000s, late 2000s. He had a couple projects called uh, Songs Ohio and Magnolia Electric Company. Just a just a real sad dude who like country music, here, you know. I think that really inspired us. And emo bands uh, are are making their comeback here in 2023. It's a lovely genre. Tear in your beer. I only had oh, one yeah. beer today. <sighs> How's it going, Dan? It's terrible. Terrible? There's having live a, music happening, day. and everybody that's everybody oh, knows that I don't like live music. Why don't you like live music, Dane? Something about it grinds my gears. But are, are, aren't you in a band? Aren't you in a couple of bands, Dane? Zero. Zero? None. You just, you just hate music. Yep, I just carry things. <laughs> I love the come up and I love heavy lifting. Name your favorite songwriter and like that member of the scene represent is like, that's Dane. Like Dane can write a song just about damn near anything and make it sound like something that you've never heard before. And it's just super special. Like this, it's just not something you find a lot around here. Keep recording this guy. Keep this in. Record. Hey, keep this in here. Keep recording. We'll fix it. Look in at post. this. Record this. Re we'll fix it in post, dude. Are you recording we're gonna, this? We're gonna we're gonna fix it. Make sure you're recording we're this. Fix it. Tournament is emo kids trying to write all country, but they're still emo. Like they, you can't shake it. Yeah. Like, they are just like they write emo songs, but. It sound they're trying to be old country. It's kind of like it's it's fun. It's fun. You get the little like you get a little snare roll. You get a little like country snail roll, or you get Bill's signature twang or a, a tuning that is essentially like a modified banjo. But it's at the same time, then they'll go in like D A E A C sharp E and start like noodling and like riffing like they're a Midwest emo band because they are at heart. It's, it's like fun. I don't know. It's like a super unique band. When tournament takes over the world, I was I was the one to call it. Tournament, my fucking country band. <laughs> Well, 
What are your thoughts on tournament in 10 words or less? In 10 words or less, my thoughts on tournament. Um, rock and roll Jesus Christ. Rock and roll Jesus Christ. That's eight. I think. That's, that's ten. That's ten. I Rock and count. roll Jesus Christ. Rock and roll Jesus Christ. Do I look like a guy that Steve, can count? Let me record you All doing right, a right. testing, testing, one, two, three, into the mic. Hold on. Testing, testing, one, two, three. I'm, I'm Daniel Van Zaniel. Are you excited to play the Goblin Zone? Yeah, I love this place. He's like Daniel Van Zaniel, the leading idiot. Of I'm top Daniel Van Zaniel. Daniel meeting. Daniel Van Zaniel meeting. Yep. I lead that. I chair that. For anybody just tuning in, that's George Paul as fuck. Bass. Yeah. <laughs> Danny guitar lead lead guitar. Danny, why do you like the Goblin Zone so much? Because the garage is like a really sweet space for one, like just physically, like it's a good space, like as far as house space is going, this is I think like a top tier, and then always the turnout, every time I've been here is insane, like it's like, this place gets packed in here, and the band's rip. And what is, what does the rock and roll Jesus Christ mean to you? What do you think of when you when hear I the think word? Of the rock and roll Jesus Christ, I think of, uh, do you know Michelangelo? No. He's a painter. Do you know Michelangelo? I like I've the, heard of him. He did, he did, he did, he did, he did. Dave? Dave. 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 Yes. And the Sistine Chapel. And the, 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 the floor. The floor! The floor. The wall. Do you get noise complaints a lot, and what do your neighbors think? Um, never, and uh, I'm not loud enough. Really? Overall, yeah. Um, I have like, there's only three neighbors who can really hear me. Like, my neighbor behind me, and he's like an older guy who was in bands in like the 70s and 80s, so he loves it. Um, honestly, feel like he can't, probably his hearing's going, because he always tells us we're not loud enough, and we literally are, his bedroom is the closest door, cl closest part of his house to my garage. So there's no way we're not loud enough. Like, he can probably hear us perfectly. Um, but he tells us we're not loud enough, tells us to turn up, asks if he can come and sit in on practice with us and jam a little bit. Um, my neighbor's, like, across the street is, like, a really, really big family, and they're all really lovely, really nice people. A couple of them have come to the shows and hung out. Um, there's one guy who lives over there who came to my EP release show here, and he moshed to my band. Um, and they'll, like, routinely come and buy merch at the shows. They've bought merch a number of times. Um, and my other neighbors across the street are kind of similar to like, there's this old guy over there, Domingo, I said old guy, but you know, nice as we're possible, he's like an older gentleman named Domingo. He'll sit on his porch and actually watch us just from the, just like watch the show from his porch. Not like watch us, not a weird way. He'll like watch the show from where he, he just likes watching what the people do because everyone's so, I don't know, goofy. <laughs> you know, we had lightsaber fights and stuff that he told me he was watching and stuff, so, you know. The, the neighbors like it, no noise complaints. We had a parking complaint once, but the police came, looked at it, and then left within like 10 minutes because they were like, it looks fine. I don't know what people are talking about. Let me, let me just, let me, let me hold that, Steve. Let me get in on that. You ever watch the Blair Witch Project? Hang on. Fuck. I feel like some sort of asshole right yeah, now. Yeah, you kind of look like an asshole. All right, um, Steve. Hey, hey. State your age, weight, and what role you're auditioning for. I just wanted to know what Steve weighs. Uh, 23, 155 pounds, which is the answer to Billy's question. And I am auditioning for the heater of Final Boss Fight. Now, I know I already am the heater of Final Boss Fight, but I like to be heater square. Just, to, you know, a little bit of job security is nice in this day and age. Also, the heater of tournament, too. I heard you guys needed a heater, and, you know, this 5'7", 155 pound sack of angry Armenian Middle Eastern muscle is gonna come at you if you try to mess up any of my boys. So, put that on the camera. I think you're in. You're so I will. In. Um, Bill? Hmm. Uh, what'd you eat for dinner? 
When I eat for dinner, yeah. I have uh, I have Panera dinner tonight. You had a girl delicious. dinner? Yeah. Was- Steve? Uh, I went to uh, Fleetwood Diner. I got a chili dog for three fifty, and my stomach hurts. So I would say I was three fifty, moderately well spent. All right, this is good. I went to school for journalism for a few months. So why do you think bands like playing the Goblin Zone so much? Um, I think it's because the shows historically turn out really well. Is definitely one. You know, no, like. As a gigging musician, there's nothing more fun than playing a show and you look out at the crowd and there's people flying through the air across the crowd and there's people chicken fighting or there's a massive circle pit where people are like hoedown kicking into the circle pit while your band is playing. Like, it's really fun. You know, the main thing you're looking for is fun and the shows, the way that they turn out like that pretty much every single time. Like we've never really had a show where it's just dead, no energy or anything. That's definitely a major draw. Um, I also like to think that I put a lot of pride into the care I put into the experience of playing the Goblin Zone for the bands. Like, you know, on, on the band front, when you go to play a show, there's a lot of back end stuff that like the people going to the shows don't see, which is like dealing with the venue, loading in, knowing where to put your gear, how everything is set up and organized, and also how the people treat you in the space that you're at. You know, I've gone and played a lot of shows where I've been treated like shit by the sound guys, or where like the venue owner like is racist or something. Like I've played a lot of bad shows, and I put a lot of effort in at the shows whenever when I'm running them to I don't know I guess be exactly what I would want out of a show experience, which is I don't know this perfect balance of just showing you everything you need, but then letting you DIY. You know, I, I try to achieve a balance where bands are still doing it themselves, but I just provide anything they could need when they need it and I try to just be nice (laughs) as nice as I possibly can to the bands and attentive to their needs and stuff and I think that has definitely paid dividends to the band experience and why bands like playing the Goblin Zone Um, because you know it's going to be a good show they're going to be treated well and everyone wants crowd surfers right that's the thing at the Goblin Zone you play the Goblin Zone you'll probably get like 95% chance you'll get a crowd surfer so going on uh, not only above but above and beyond beyond any other space you're going to see you have actually has created a, a safe space a community and a family and like a fucking bar isn't going to do that for you even a great bar isn't going to do that for you uh even a co- like there's no co-op party that's going to be as welcoming as the goblin zone like when you consider like all the other places that we could play it's, it's not even a question you know what i mean it's not even a contest Joe from Tequila Mockingbird, huge, 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 huge part of this scene. It's just an absolute, like, icon for one, and he might get mad at me for saying that, but absolute icon and just an, uh, just a mind, an absolute mind of the community where I, he just, he just speaks the truth and, and says the things that you're like, yo, like, I've been thinking that, but I haven't been able to find the words to articulate that. That's the guy. Go to, go to Joe. He can articulate things and, and have this knowledge and insight on things that are is so important to the scene that I even, myself, I'm like, damn, I can't even believe I'm in a band with this guy. Like, I just feel so blessed. No one does this shit for money. We do it for fun. We're friends. We're a community. Like, it doesn't matter if we make money at the end of the day, even if we do. Amen, Who brother. cares? We're just here to have a good fucking time and have a good show. Exactly. <laughs> You know, a lot of us go through shit and we live suspended in, you know, moments of 30 minutes of euphoria, whether it's sports, whether it's video games, whether it's whatever. And for us to be an outlet like that, a real tangible community for people to come to and for four hours have like the best time of their life and do whatever they want, like that means something. I don't know. It's super sick. What are you going to do? Go to a co-op? You're going to go play to a bunch of college kids where you don't even know if if there's a fire 
that you'll die because you're at the back of the room in the in the basement and 90% of the people don't even care what you're doing they're just talking to each other you could play Dream Theater or you could play in Blink-182 or you could play Taylor Swift and they might, maybe they'll care about Taylor Swift they don't care what you play so like would you do you want to play there do you want to play at um, local bars that treat you like shit and have weird time slots or apathetic crowds which okay I guess they can be good sometimes of course or do you want to just go play to friends and have the time of your life <laughs> I mean when you have those options it's pretty obvious which one a lot of people at least I guess our age would take a lot of DIY scrappy little kids would take and I don't know man it just feels like the right move go, go, go. I don't know, man. Now it's been so crazy. Like that first show, there was maybe five, ten people there, and uh, now you get—I don't even know how many. Like a hundred at these shows. It's ridiculous. It's like beautiful to see what it's fostered. Let's go! There are so many places, so many times that we get said no as a musician that you get used to it and you treat yourself like you're less than what you actually are. Fuck that! And it, it, it's, it's normal. And then you come to Lansing, Michigan, and then everybody sings your fucking dumb songs that you wrote in your fucking room. Hell yeah! <laughs> so, um, anyways, I'm gonna fucking wonder why my ass out of here. Yeah! I played it in the living room in the Church of Elvis Presley. Every time I got louder, there were these group of girls in the corner who kept on getting louder with me. It was really funny anyways. I'll confess, I'll confess, I'll confess, I'll confess, I'll confess, I'll confess. Musician, a fucking liar. I don't want to know where you were sleeping. I just want to know what the fuck are you thinking? Is there something wrong with me? Cause I see you struggle. so much the TG is the greatest thing in the world. What motivates you to keep putting on shows and entertaining people? Um, definitely the people coming to the shows. Um, the fact that people come to the shows. Um, I think that if I had been doing the shows this long, which is like going on a year, and the impact it has matters to me more than anything else like i could care less if like the shows are like popular i care more like that um i'm providing the space to so many people and seeing it have such a large impact on like the people are uh, like the number of people around me definitely inspires me to keep it going because you know i would provide a space where i guess this past weekend at you know tgz 10 there was well, like a hundred, like over a hundred people who are able to come and be in a really welcoming, warm environment where they feel safe and they feel secure to be themselves openly and express themselves. That definitely drives me to keep going. That I'm able to provide it to so many people. You know, thought there for me though is just the impact it has on the people who come to the shows. You know, being able to uplift them and provide them an area where they able to be themselves and be safe, welcome, love so much love that's the that's really what makes me want to keep doing it and that's it's fun it's so much fun <laughs> uh, Gavin 23 uh, location at the Fledge in Lansing oh, Michigan we kind of just needed a house and so it was just like me and a couple like our bandmates wanted to move out and move in together and stuff so we did that it wasn't gonna be a venue at first and then uh, 
we were just like, let's just throw a show, and then it ended up kind of blossoming into a big community and stuff like that. We were bored, and we were like wanting people to hang out and like give people like a place to like feel comfortable and stuff. So we ended up just being like trying to throw a show together. And I think Dane found Final Boss Fight, and it was just like, yeah, let's see if they're down to do it. And then it just kind of went from there. Everybody hopefully felt like comfortable the whole time and safe. It was right after the pandemic, so I feel like a lot of people were starting bands around that time, and I feel like it was kind of just like an outlet for us to kind of like start like writing. We didn't really think it would, like a lot of people would take to it, but it was really cool to see like how it became. We've made a lot of friends from it, and a lot of friendships that I wouldn't give for the world. Um, so the church to me was home. I moved here from Florida with my best friend. We didn't really have a plan. We had just uprooted our whole entire life and moved here. Um, so finding a place to fit in was very hard. Um, after finding Vic and Gavin, they introduced us to the church, which was a little DIY music venue in Lansing. And we were very, very scared to even go to the church. Um, whenever we went there, it was actually the first house show. Little did I know a couple months later I'd actually be living there. So. so the Goblin Zone is another DIY venue. Um, it really started getting going after the church ended. It's run by Kiefer. We love Kiefer. Kiefer is absolutely amazing. I feel like they're my parent almost in like the most genuine sweet way ever. That has really became like the second home after the church. They've made it such a positive and safe atmosphere so I think it, it really is just a second home from home. Do you think the Goblin Zone is a spiritual successor to the church? It's gonna be a million, it's already a million times better than the church. <laughs> no, a million times better. <laughs> Why is that? What Keeper is making is like it's like so much more organized. Before the church even ended, I thought the Goblin Zone was leagues better. Way better than anything the church had, I feel like. I was gonna say, Kiefer, I, I take a lot of notes from Kiefer. Like Kiefer, they have been like a big influence on how I try to do things a lot. You know, Kiefer, huge in the, the scene. It ended, uh... Oh wait, how did it end? Well, we all wanted to like move out and like kind of go on our own journeys and whatnot, so we all and decided to call it quits, and we thought it like lasted long enough. So we all had partners, so we were just like ready to kind of move forward. Oh, I met Kiefer at the church actually, where we had our house venue in Lansing. I joined a band called Tournament, and after that, we wanted Kiefer to join. Kiefer's like the... The queen of DIY. So Kiefer, I'm not trying to say that they're spontaneous or anything, but like there was a long time where they said that they weren't going to do shows, and then the church shut down, and I don't know. It was tough. It was tough. Like it hit everybody really hard. It hit me really hard, and like it was like this big moment of wondering of like, like what's gonna happen next. And I think around that time when we knew it was ending, Kiefer, I guess they probably just thought that they needed that community, those people, and the love in their life. And they were just going to continue it and do, like, it was going to be a spiritual successor to the church. And then the shows went from, I might do once every couple months, to, okay, I'll do one every month, to, all right, I might host some other shows here, too, on other days. And, oh, I might do this. And I'm going to have art vendors show up. I'm going to go and do this. I'm going to, Joe, you can host the show that you booked at my house. And it's stuff like that. And, like, I don't know. It went from... Wow, I'm never gonna do shows in my house, too. I want to set some ground rules for everybody real quick. So obviously, if you've been to the church of Elvis Presley, it's not that different from there. We're very mosh friendly here. The Goblin Zone, show it real quick. That would not exist without corduroy pants. I never would have done it without corduroy pants. Never. I said I was never doing shows here at one point, and then I saw what corduroy pants was doing, and I started doing shows. This is on them. Yeah. Like Dad Kemp's and, and Corduroy, like they should get all the credit in the world for starting and creating what what the scene is now. I don't know. I don't know where I'd be in my life without like that crew. Like the church started out as a necessity because there's no other places to play. So Gavin and Vic and uh, Dane and Mav, who I think all did there and the scene for others or whatever. Whoever ended up living there were in bands and they were like, I'm just gonna I was at my own house, which is the most DIY shit ever, right? And yeah, the shows when they started, they were like five people. 
you know, and I was like the one person from like out of the city who came over and I needed to be in the scene. I needed to be a part of what was going on. And I didn't realize like how like awesome church was. I played it at a fun time, you know, mosh around with like five, ten people, have a great time, drink a few beers, and I was like, yeah, that's awesome, I'm gonna do it again. And of course, I, uh, well, I lied to Gavin Dolan, said I had a whole band, not a whole band, said I had 30 minutes of material, I had 20. <laughs> and next thing I know, I think it was two months later, I was playing a show. <laughs> befitting of the last Goblin Zone of the year. No, no. This is definitely kind of like a momentous show for us, capping off the first year of the sh uh, Goblin Zone. Our first show was on December 3rd. So we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the first show. And just want to thank all of you so much for helping make the Goblin Zone become what it has in that first year. All of you are responsible for that. Um, give yourself a round of applause. Woo, woo. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, none of this would happen if y'all didn't keep coming to the shows, didn't tell your friends about the shows, didn't bring your friends to the shows, X, Y, and Z, whatever. You're amazing. Thank you. I love you all. Um, just want to highlight that first show. The first person who ever played in the Goblin Zone is standing right in front of me. His name is Steve and goes by Savag. This was the first performance that ever happened in this room. Um, Want to give a shout out. There's a bunch of people shooting tonight. They're all pretty much in front of me. My photographer, Ang, who has been helping me out so much. I don't even know how many of my shows you shot this year. I think 13, maybe 15. Like most of them. So many. Ang has shot the majority of my shows and is my favorite top photographer in the whole world. Owe a lot to Ang for helping to capture all these special moments. All of you need to thank Ang right now because there's a picture you love that they took. So say thank you to Aang, please. It's gonna get wild. It's the Goblin Zone. I expect us to start moshing. If someone falls, make sure to pick them up. Do not let people fall on the ground and get hurt. That's, that's it. I did it. Thank you so much for coming to the last Goblin Zone of the year. So this is the time of the Goblin Zone where it's the cleanup time and everyone's winding down and having fun. But uh, you can see a lot of the bandmates be pretty sweaty, for example. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Jesus. Christ. The other team played really good defense, but we just we kept our heads down and we came out on top. Oh, I'll, I'll be right back. Hang on. I got my target. <laughs> Real quick, Steve's making a documentary. <laughs> well, right now, I'm yeah. trying to wrestle my beer away from my coworker, and she's not giving. She just gave it to me, actually. Okay, um, Bottoms the fuck up. Okay, what is your what's your favorite kind of coworker and beer? My favorite kind of coworker is one that shuts the fuck up and leaves me the fuck alone. And my favorite beer is PBR. God bless America. Need to go to the bathroom. Dude, Dave's not in this scene. Get involved in your local scene. Be a part of a positive impact and a positive change. If you're thinking about it, go after it because it's worth your time. Every single bit. What's your What's your advice to the, the, the next generation? Get fucked up. Stay away from social media. Don't get an Instagram. Don't play outside with your friends. Look at me right now. Anything. Don't stay online.
go out and be a person. I just throw it away. It was that's perfect. Like, oh, that, that's on God. Get that's fucked good. up. Definitely put like love and kindness first into everything you do. Um, listen a lot. Ears open all the time. You know, if you're putting on a show or something. It pays off a lot to just be walking around and listening to what people are saying about their time at the place. And you can learn so much of how to improve the space and improve the experience for the people going to the shows just from listening. Maybe you'll find something new that you haven't been a part of before and like you'll be like, hey, like I really like this. And it's just kind of putting yourself out there and like, you know, trying to be comfortable doing like different things that you're not really like used to doing so to speak and just you know trying to catch a vibe doing different things michigan's always been like an export for great music and i think it's like how much of a family this shit is and realize that it's the midwest welcome to our family if you want to come in come in we'll show you a good time you know i hope that like people realize like there's something tangible here. I don't know, dude. Ever since my first house show, I just knew that these weren't just local bands. I knew that they were better than that. and all this keeper? No thoughts. Empty. Empty head. Excuse, excuse me, I got a tune. I gotta go to school, Jesse. We gotta, we gotta get good straight hands on you. Graduate with our, with our business degree, Jesse. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Reese's Puffs? 10 out of 10 dentists approve. Show. 